Welcome to our second lectures on advanced power electronics and control and this class we will discuss about the basics concept of switches. First let us understand why power electronics is preferred. You know let us see that is a very one simple example you know we want actually a buck operation 9 volt to 3 volt. Of course, you can use a voltage divider circuit and we can calculate actually what is the amount of the actually power to be dissipated here and accordingly we can choose the resistances and that will give you the desired uh, actually dissipation. But what happened you know this solution is quite lossy. So, you require to put this resistance since current will be the same. So, 33 percent will be actually dissipated here, 66 percent will be dissipated across the internal resistance. So, efficiency of the system only will be close to 33 percent maximum and so what you can understand it is quite disadvantageous. Now, let us consider a switch mechanical switch let us first conceptualize and which is getting on and off. So, we will on for the interval of T by 3 and we will keep it off for the rest of the interval. So, what happen you know you can take the time average of it and you can get the voltage. So, that voltage will be around 3 volt. So, what happened here? why it is advantageous? It is because once switch is on, so across the switch there is no power drop and just reverse because voltage across the switch idealized to be 0. Though power electronic devices will have some losses that is different issue and just reverse happens when actually switch is open, total voltage will come across the switches. So, no current will flow and also power losses to the switches is 0. So, for this reason you know of course, it is not possible to mechanical switch to operate in such a first fashion and for this reason we require to use a power electronic switches and if operated uh, very fast then we can see that we can get a average value of it. So, for this reason and whether it will give precisely 3 volt there is also a very big challenge and there for this reason control aspects comes into the picture. You will have a control mechanism that will ensure that you are getting a the desired voltage level what has been prescribed up to a precision which the customer asks for. And of course, here since there is a lot of switching we will have a high frequencies and that can be easily smooth out by putting a low pass filter since this frequencies can be as high as in the range of the megahertz in case of the soft switching converter that will come later what we mean by the soft switching converter. So, this is the average value of it this is a time interval and and to create 3 volt we will be actually passing to the low pass filter to suppress the high frequencies and feedback is also required to give a precise control of this actually the converter. Now, same way when you require a wide range of speed variation. So, think about uh, electric locomotives and now what we can do is basically you know that actually one control is called V by F control. So, what happen if you control V by F essentially you make flux constant. So, torque will be proportional to only the current. So, if you keep the torque constant current also remains constant. 
So, what happened you know you can keep this ratio constant and vary the frequency. So, you can get for the induction machine rate a various rated speed at different frequencies in that way you can change. So, what you can do here? First of all you have a constant supply, constant frequency supply 50 hertz. Then you will be feeding to the front end converter that will give you the DC. Thereafter you will have a variable frequency converter and that will give you a AC with a variable frequencies ranging from 10 to let us say 50 hertz and of course, it is possible to go higher that discussion will be taking later. So, then that will be fitted to the AC motor and AC motor itself is a low pass filter because it has a huge amount of the inductor presented to the system and that will be actually truncate the high frequency ripple and thus you can get a wide range of variation of the speed from this putting a variable frequency controller. So, it will can precisely actually you can set that speed and precisely you can operate by a basically it can be a commanded system this is a open loop operation if you take feedback of it then you can ensure that it is actually rotating at the desired speed. So, traditionally motor system run nearly at a constant speed that is what I was saying because you have a constant frequency supply and for, for example, flow rate of the pump is controlled by actually by wasting a portion of the input energy across the rotating or throttling valve. This waste is eliminated by adjustable speed drive, adjustable pill electric drive as shown below by efficiently controlling this motor speed. Hence, the pump speed by means of the power electronics can be controlled and energy is saved that is more important. When you require to have a reduced uh, throughput, you can give a variable frequency supply and VYF ratio can be controlled accordingly. So, it will run less and the throughput will be less in that way you can control it. So, instead of wasting energy, you will be feeding less energy to the motor. Now, what are the desired characteristics of the electronics or the power electronic switches? So, an electronic switch, what is the difference between mechanical switch and electronic switch? Mechanical switch is basically a switch which has a metal conductors and is slow in operation and an electronic switch will be in a first in operation. Electronic switch is characterized as having two states on and off state ideally being either short or the open circuit. When it is closed it is short when it is open circuit. So, no uh, once no current flows when actually it is open circuited and when it is short circuited voltage across the switch should be equal to 0 that is the ideal characteristics of the switch. If switch is ideal either the switch voltage or the switch current is 0 making the power absorption to the switch is 0. So, we should try to achieve that unfortunately power electronics devices actually lacks this feature. The particular switching devices used in the power electronic circuit depends on the existing state of device and the technology that we will see little later what does it mean by that. Therefore, semiconductor devices are usually modeled as ideal switches. So, the circuit behavior can be emphasized. Switches are modeled as short circuit when on and when off it is open circuit. Transition between the states are usually assumed to be instantaneous, but effect of non ideal switching are discussed and it will be actually put into the appropriate application later. So, of course, first power electronics device is essentially is a diode that we are using pretty long time that we use for the rectifier operation. This is the actually the diode uh, and generally it is put it to the heat sink. So, for the power dissipations and generally it will have a voltage drop, but something please keep in mind 
power diode will have a power drop more than 0.7 volt because it has a one extra positive n layer. So this is the actually actual figure of the uh, diode. This is a symbol, and this is actually the V I characteristics of the uh, diode. And you know that actually uh, it will almost conducting for the 0.7 volt considering that it is a power diode. So, this uh, rating is almost close to 0 and this is actually the coordinate of operation. It will block in reverse direction and current can flow in either in this direction. So, it is a one quadrant operation and this is basically its turn off characteristics. Once it is on current was flowing thereafter you initiate a change in voltage. So, then what happened gradually current will come to 0, but still it does not have a voltage breaking capability. How fast is getting a voltage breaking capability based on that there are different kind of diet. So, this is called TRR reverse recovery time, shorter the reverse recovery time fast will be the diet put into the operation. Now, this is the thyristor, this is actually the uh, one small thyristors. Thyristors and diodes are almost same features, but it has thyristor has got a control. So, what happened here? Once actually it has been triggered by the gate, then only current flows, otherwise, it has got a forward blocking capability which was absent in case of the diode, diode crosses this threshold voltage then only it start conducting, but it has got a uh, forward blocking capability for this is an operation almost same it is uh, it conducts I in this direction. It can block this direction as well as this direction, but this direction is controlled blocking forward direction. So, we have another variant of the thyristors that is called gate turn off thyristors since turn on uh, is can be done by the thyristors. So, turn off in different manner, but there are, are possible solutions given by this another device called GTO. So, there what happen if by injecting negative current you can also turn off these devices. So, for this is called it is GTO. And similarly, you got an MCT that is MOS control thyristors. So, there also you can turn it off. Now, there is a transistors, transistors basically BJT it has seen a lowest power BJTs, uh, signal level BJT has shown lot of applications for many years, but in power electronics it is quite short lived because you know actually BJT will have a same characteristics of, uh, of this actually normal signal BJT, but what current flows basically you know I in active region IC equal to beta into IB, but problem lies you know since I, I value of the IC is quite high. So, and beta's value is around 50 to 100, so IB also required to be quite high and it is very difficult to get that each, uh, huge amount of the power dissipation in the actually the base part of the circuit. It has to sink that amount of current and for this reason you know actually for the high frequency application the low power applications we found one solution that is basically uh, MOSFET different kind of MOSFET is possible. Here one of the advantage is that actually here charge is introduced is a MOSFET is essentially a voltage control current device. So, what happened you know when actually you got a uh, you got a pulses positive pulses. So, you have a induced negative charges. So, it make a channel and due to this channel current will flow and there can be a normally on MOSFET and normally off MOSFET and one of the basic advantage of it that actually if you apply the DC voltage. So, there is a capacitive effect the current should be very low and due to that actually there is a less consumption of the gate driver circuit, but however, the current current capability depends on the channel width and thus you know we have found that you know actually current handling capability 
of this MOSFET quite low. And gate part of this MOSFETs and the BJT has been combined by Baliga, one of the Indian scientists in G. So, he came out with the solution of the IGBT. So, IGBT has an advantage of huge current carrying capability and also the advantage of the actually the MOSFET K driver circuit. It incorporated both and thus it becomes a quite famous and that itself actually phase out the BJT. Invent of the IGBT basically the cause of phasing out of the BJT. So, BJT we will not be discussed very much in high frequency lower power application we will be discussing MOSFETs for the control devices and for the little low frequency and high power devices we shall talk about IGBTs. Now, switching selections that is quite important in previous class I have shown that you know what are the different voltage level and the power level from there what are the devices you will choose. And here also this feature is quite important. While selection of the switch we require the voltage and the current level. There is a safe zone of operation that will be prescribed in your data sheet. Unless you are working with a device say you are starting working with the SIC does does not have a data sheet and somehow you manage from the manufacturer to get the devices. So, that is different issue otherwise we will have a data sheet. So, from there actually voltage and the current levels will be prescribed and we require to choose actually you have to see that what are the desired voltage and current level and accordingly we have to choose a factor of safety. More the factor of safety we will find that actually more will be the mean breakdown time that mean actually it will be expected to leave longer. But of course, the penalty have to pay by the cost. Since the rating will be higher, the cost of the devices is going to be higher. And also switching characteristics. If it is a high frequency applications, then you know diet TRR required to be considered, we require to choose a fast uh, diet that is first recovery diet. So, that has to be considered and also on of control. For example, if you have a actually line commutated devices like if you are applying for the line voltage to the rectifier or line voltage converter operation where your devices like thyristors will be naturally commutated without external circuits that is one of the features. So, whether the device has on off control or it has only on control or off control what is the stress coming out across the switches when you are actually turning on or turning off the devices. So, and it required to be smoothened in a white manner. So, then snubber comes into the picture to actually the, uh, reduce the stress across it. Switching speed. So, every devices will have a prescribed DVDT and DIDT. Please understand that once you track it on, it is not an instantaneous phenomena even if it is a microsecond or nanosecond. So, there is a speed to ramp on. So, this ramp on time you know, so there will be a DVDT as well as a DIDT. So, maximum value of DVDT and DIDT will be prescribed in your data sheets by the kind of devices you are choosing. You have to find it out the what is the rate of DVDT in your circuit and DIDT in your circuit accordingly you will select the switch that is also one of the important parameter to observe and associated power losses. So, that is for important feature we want an efficiency to be more than 90 percent for the power electric devices. So, accordingly we require to choose that particular devices that gives you the least power drop. Now, once a power electronics devices is operating full control devices it has a three losses turn on loss, turn off loss and the conduction loss. 
and we have to find it out which lots predominant in which sector and we have to attack that part of it and get it reduced and we will get the desired efficiencies. When selecting a suitable switching devices, first consideration required operating point of turn on and turn off characteristics. So, we will find out the safe operating region in between and from there we will be deriving the switches. I am giving an, one example here, let us see in the figure 1 has two switches, S1 on and connects the source Vs as 24 volt to the currents of that is the it is carrying a load current of 2 ampere, it is desired to open switch S1 to disconnect Vs from the current source, this requires a second switch S2 to close to provide a path, path for current of I0 as in the figure B. At the later time S1 must reclose and S2 must open to restore the circuit to the original condition. This cycle will repeat in some frequency, we require for the compactness and other issues that frequency to be around as high as 200 kilohertz. So, determine the kind of device required for the each switch and the maximum voltage and current required for the each of the element. You can see that actually for switch S1, we require to when it is closed, it has to carry a current of I0, but you take some factor of safety. Similarly, when it is off, it has to block that voltage. So, it has to block the voltage Vs and similarly for S2, what happen? S2 is open, then it has to block the voltage of minus Vs and it will carry the current of I0. So, thus what we can visualize you know from this characteristics what kind of device I require. So, you know you see that this voltage has to block the forward voltage. So, we cannot use diode here, so it has to use the active devices and since it is a high frequency application I told you you know that one of the solution is actually the MOSFET gives you the maximum efficiency. So, for this reason you will get a MOSFET, generally MOSFET comes with the body diet, anti parallel diet. So, what happened? So, you can see that this characteristics can be achieved by it. Once it is on, it will carry the current of I0, once it is off, it can block it. Same way for S2, what happened here in S2? S2 will carry the current positive direction, unidirectional and it has to block the reverse voltage. So, for this reason you know diode in anti parallel from this point, this node point of view, this configuration will be most suitable. Of course, you know we can do something. If current is high and you know that actually this gives you a 0.7 volt drop, so power loss is around 1.4 watt. Instead of that why cannot you use a uh, devices which will only have RD on, RD on is generally MOSFET of very low value. So, then it becomes a synchronous buck converter. So, accordingly what happen you can reduce the loss as well as control because you cannot control the diode, diode will conduct the moment it is off. But you can control of the current of these devices. So, for this reason, if it is a synchronous operation and we require to reduce the losses and in a more compact control, most of the MOSFET drive here will have, since these two devices will have a complementary logics, it does not contain, it is very easier to actually have that kind of logic, and for this reason, we will prefer a synchronous rectification. So, this is a one of the 
example how we will choose a device. So, this is a classification of the devices uncontrolled turn on and turn off that is diode. If the voltage between actually cathode and anode, anode is more than cathode it will conduct otherwise it will block. If it is suitable for your application use diode that is the simplest because it does not require any control it will be automatically allow it is something like a valve it will allow to current to pass in one direction and it will block to the another direction. Control turn on and uncontrolled turn off. Once you want to control and get it open and then putting off it, it does not require you may have a natural commutations or natural off then you use SCR. Once you require both control turn on and control turn off then use either of these devices depending on the rating frequencies and the power levels. BJT is nowadays is obsolete because of this actually uh, high power requirement in the uh, base driver or the grade driver circuits, but these entities are very frequently used in our power electronics devices. The continuous gate signal is required BJT though it has been disconnected uh, this is not no longer used MOSFET, but yes theoretically yes MOSFET and IGBT. Power dissipation of MOSFET is the least because it you know it induces the channel and that way actually it power flow. So, power dissipation across the control devices require least power in case of the MOSFET they are for IGBT. And pulse gate requirement is SCI, GTO and MCT. So, you can give it a pulse it will be turn on, but turn off cannot be done in case of the SCR. In GTO you can actually put it off by negative pulses and but it does not require any power in between for this is in power handling capability of these devices is quite high, but limitation is that is high frequency operation it cannot go for the high frequency GTO is a full control device, but problem lies it has frequency limited to the around 500 hertz and same way for MCT. Now, based on bipolar voltage withstanding capability, so it can withstand the bidirectional voltage and block and allow. So, this is SCS and GTO we will come little later that is actually MOSFETs comes with the body diet. So, for this reason it does not have a, a bipolar withstanding capability. Unipolar voltage withstanding capability is BJT, MOSFET, IGBT, G2, MCT. So, if you require a unipolar voltage blocking then you can have a plenty of choice. And if you want actually bidirectional current capability, so then you have to use a track or we will show a at one different configuration of the matrix converter. Then unidirectional current capability that can be done on SCR, GTO, MOSFET, IGBT, MCT as well as that. These are the few uh, uh, actually take away today's class about this devices. So, we have to choose a device based on this actually the applications. So, this is a different way to find it out devices which will be suitable for our applications one of the classification based on this classifications. Thank you for your attention we are looking forward to device applications in next class also thank you.